Readings. Today I'll define the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem ECDLP, whose intractability is needed for the security of all elliptic curve cryptosystems. The ECDLP has now been studied for 40 years, and the fastest known attack on it takes fully exponential time. We have the following definition. Let E be an elliptic curve defined over the integers modulo p. And suppose that the number n of points on the curve is prime. Let p be any point on the elliptic curve, and let k be a positive integer. Then by k times p, I mean the point p added to itself k times. I'll also define 0p to be the point at infinity, and minus kp, so a negative integer times p, to be minus kp, so the negative of the point kp. This operation of computing kp is called point multiplication. Let me remark that a point multiplication, k times p, can be efficiently computed using the elliptic curve analog of the repeated square and multiply algorithm for modular exponentiation. Modular exponentiation is the evaluation of a times a times a dot 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 times a modulo n, where there are m copies of a. On the other hand, point multiplication is the evaluation of p plus p plus p dot 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 plus p, where there are k copies of p. So, replacing the modular multiplication operation in the repeated square and multiply algorithm with elliptic curve point addition yields a repeated double and add algorithm for point multiplication. We have the following theorem on point multiplication. Let p be any point on the elliptic curve, except the point at infinity. Then, n times p equals infinity. Also, when you add p to itself repeatedly, the points you obtain, namely infinity, p, 2p, 3p, up to n minus 1p, are distinct points. Since the curve has n points in total, and these are n points on the curve, these points must be the set of all points on the elliptic curve. Thus, the set of rational points on E is a set 0p, 1p, 2p, up to n minus 1p. If you are familiar with group theory, then you'll notice that this theorem follows from the standard result that all groups of prime order are cyclic. I'll call the point P a generator of the elliptic curve. Note that any point except the point at infinity is a generator. We can visualize the endpoints on the elliptic curve as being arranged in a cycle. The cycle begins at 1p, then we move on to 2p, 3p, 4p, and so on, up to n minus 3p, n minus 2p, n minus 1p, 0p, and we're back to p again. As you add p to itself repeatedly, you go around the cycle forever and ever. If you go around the cycle in the counterclockwise direction, then you encounter the negative multiples of p. So minus 1p, which is the same as n minus 1p, minus 2p, minus 3p, and so on. Thus, for any integer k, whether positive or negative, we have that kp is equal to the integer k modulo n times p. So the multiplier k of p can be reduced modulo n. Here is an example. Let's consider the elliptic curve y squared equals x cubed plus x plus 4 over the integers modulo 23. I've listed here all the points on the curve, including the point at infinity. The number of points on the curve is 29, which is a prime number. So by the previous theorem, any point on the curve, except the point at infinity, can serve as a generator for the set of all points. Let's take p equals 0 to to be a generator. 
Here I've listed all the multiples of p, 1p, 2p, 3p, and so on, up to 29p, which is the point at infinity. You can see that these multiples of p comprise all the points on the elliptic curve. I can now define the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem, or ECDLP. In this problem, we're given an elliptic curve defined over the integers modulo p, whose number of points n is prime. We're also given an arbitrary point p on the elliptic curve other than the point at infinity, and a randomly selected point q on the elliptic curve. Our task is to find the unique integer l between 0 and n minus 1, such that q equals l times p. In other words, the problem asks to find the number of times that p was added to itself to get the point q. In terms of the cycle, we're given the red points p and q, and we're challenged with determining the distance on the cycle from p to q. The integer l is called the discrete logarithm of q to the base p, and written l equals log base p of q. Here's an instance of the ECDLP for the elliptic curve from the previous slide. Recall that this elliptic curve has 29 points. We're given the point p equals 0 to, which serves as a generator, and some point q equals 1018 on the curve. We have to find the integer l between 0 and 28, such that q equals l times p. Of course, here the number of points on the curve is small, namely 29. So I can solve the problem by searching through all multiples of p until I encounter q. Since q equals 18p, the logarithm of q to the base p is 18. This trial and error method is not efficient if n is large, since there will be too many multiples of p to try. The ECDLP can be solved using brute force. In this naive algorithm, one computes the multiples of p, namely p, 2p, 3p, 4p, and so on, until q is encountered. In the worst case, the attack takes big O of n point additions, or big O of p, since by Haas's theorem, n is roughly equal to p. This running time is fully exponential, since an ECDLP instance, namely the equation e, the prime p, the number n of points on the curve, and the coordinates of the points p and q, require big O of log p bits to write down. So the running time p is exponential in the input size log p. There is a faster attack on the ECDLP than brute force, and that's Shanks's algorithm. Here's the main idea of the attack. I'll define m to be the square root of n rounded up. By the division algorithm for integers, there exist unique integers q and r, such that l equals q times m plus r. Here, r is a remainder, which is between 0 and m minus 1, and q is a quotient, which is non-negative. Since the unknown discrete logarithm l is less than n, q must also be less than the square root of n, and so q is also between 0 and m minus 1. Shanks's algorithm determines l by first finding the quotient q and the remainder r. Rearranging the equation, we have l minus qm equals r. Then multiplying both sides by the point p gives us lp minus qmp equals rp. Since q equals lp, we get q minus qmp equals rp. Shanks's algorithm is suggested by this key equation. The idea is to compute the points on the right-hand side for all integers r between 0 and m minus 1, and store these in a table. And then we compute all the points on the left-hand side 
for all integers q between 0 and m minus 1 and look for a match. This should remind you of the meet in the middle attack on double des from video lecture V2D. Here are the steps of the algorithm. For each number r between 0 and m minus 1, we'll compute r times p and store the point rp and the integer r in a sorted table. We'll then compute the point m equals little m times p by using the elliptic curve analog of the repeated square and multiply algorithm for modular exponentiation. Next, for each integer q between 0 and m minus 1, we'll compute the point r by subtracting qm from q and look up the point r in the table. If r equals rp for some r, then q minus qm equals r times p. And so we can conclude that l equals qm plus r. Thus, we output l equals qm plus r and stop. The running time of step 1 is m point additions. Step 2 is very fast. For each iteration of step 3, we need one point addition to compute qm from q minus 1 times m that was computed in the previous iteration, and a second point addition to subtract qm from capital Q. Hence, the running time of the algorithm is big O of m point additions for step 1, and big O of m point additions for step 3, for a total of big O of m point additions. This is also big O of square root of n, since m is at most the square root of n, which in turn is big O of square root of p by Haas's theorem. This running time is fully exponential in log p. However, Shanks's algorithm is still faster than the brute force method, which takes big O of p point additions. The drawback of Shanks's algorithm is its very large storage cost of big O of square root of p points for the table in step 1. A third method for solving the ECDLP is Pollard's algorithm. This algorithm has the same running time as Shanks's algorithm, but has negligible storage requirements. Moreover, the Van Orschet Wiener collision finding algorithm for hash functions that we saw in chapter 3 can be adapted to perfectly parallelize Pollard's algorithm. I won't describe Pollard's algorithm in this lecture, but you should remember that Pollard's algorithm is the fastest method known for solving the ECDLP, with the exception of two special families of elliptic curves that can be easily avoided in practice. The first special family of elliptic curves is comprised of elliptic curves whose number n of points is equal to p itself. For these curves, the ECDLP can be efficiently solved in polynomial time. The second special family of elliptic curves is comprised of elliptic curves whose number n of points divides p to the c minus 1 for a small integer c, for example, c at most 100. These curves can be avoided in practice by checking that n is not equal to p and that n does not divide p to the c minus 1 for all integer c between 1 and 100. Lastly, the ECDLP can be solved very efficiently in polynomial time on a quantum computer. This is with an algorithm discovered in 1994 by Peter Shore. So, the most widely used public key cryptosystems today, RSA and elliptic curve cryptography, can both be totally broken by quantum computers. We don't know as yet if and when cryptographically relevant quantum computers will be built. Nonetheless, quantum safe alternatives to RSA and ECC have been developed. In August 2024, NIST published standards for Kyber and Lithium, which are lattice-based key encapsulation and signature schemes that appear to resist attacks by quantum computers. 
Kyber and the lithium are viable replacements for RSA and ECC. If you would like to learn more about Kyber and the lithium, you can check out the course on my webpage, cryptography101.ca. In any case, the fastest classical method known for solving the general ECDLP is Pollard's algorithm, which has a fully exponential running time. In the next lecture, we'll introduce the notion of elliptic curve cryptography and explain the advantages of elliptic curve cryptosystems over their RSA counterparts. We'll present the three elliptic curves that are most commonly used in practice, P256, Curve 25519, and P384. We'll explain why the primes used for these elliptic curves are sums and differences of a small number of powers of two. I'll see you in V8C.